All right, so let's see how much basic math you remember. And here is our problem. And you're going to want to try to solve this without using a calculator. All right, so we have uh, 3 and 1 half squared divided by 2 and 1 third squared. And we do have a multiple choice question here. Let's take a look at our answers. So A is 3. B is 5 over 7, C is 9 over 4, and D is 12 over 13. All right, so once again, no calculators, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here again is our problem. So we have these mixed number fractions. This is how we uh, refer to fractions like this. So we have a mixed number fraction here, a mixed number fraction here, and we need to square these and, of course, divide these. So... Uh, we're going to have to use our basic math skills. Hopefully, you remember how to do this problem. And let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is C, 9 over 4. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of basic mathematics. So nice job. Now, a lot of you out there might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I knew uh, how to do this problem, but I totally forgot because the last time I was doing this work was maybe like 1976 or 1992. Listen, I totally get it. Math is a skill, and if you don't use your math skills, you're going to forget them. So don't get discouraged if you didn't remember how to do this problem. That's why I like doing these videos where I say, put your calculator away. Oftentimes, I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of calculators, but if you don't use your math skills, your arithmetic skills, you will forget them. So let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. All right, so here is the situation. We have a mixed number fraction divided by a mixed number fraction, but these mixed number fractions are being squared. All right, so as a matter of fact, let me just kind of center this a bit. It's kind of bugging me. All right. So what do we need to do here? Well, obviously, we need to know how to work with fractions. But I am uh, saying that we have a mixed number fraction. So what is a mixed number fraction? Well, a mixed number fraction is fractions like this, where you have like a whole number, then a little fraction like so. Now, this is in contrast to two other fractions where you might have something like one third. This is called a proper fraction where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Remember, the denominator is the number on the bottom. The numerator is the number on the top. And then you can have something called an uh, improper fraction. So that's like something like 7 third or like our answer 9 fourths, where the numerator is greater than the denominator. All right, so we got mixed number fractions. We have improper fractions. We have uh, 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 proper fractions, excuse me. But uh, what do we really have going on here? Well, we have a math problem. It's a multiple choice question. And if you face this on a test, yes, indeed, I'm going to tell you as a math teacher, just take a guess. Yeah, I don't know. You might be saying, B looks pretty good to me. Well, unfortunately, it's wrong. So the only way to really get the answer here is to know the math. Now, what math do we need to know? Well, we need to know how to work with mixed number fractions and convert these mixed number fractions into improper fractions because this is what we're going to need to do in order to square these fractions. So that's one skill you need. And the other skill you need is to understand the basic order of operations because we have powers, we have exponents, and we have division. So we're going to have to understand that, and then we're going to have to know how to divide fractions. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into uh, everything right now. So let's start off with the order of operations. So the order of operations, uh, you kind of remember the correct order by this little lovely acronym right here, PEMDAS. Okay. Now notice I just kind of drew an arrow from left to right. Now, in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and even powers, these are mathematical operations. This is what we can do with numbers. All right, so a mathematical operator would be something like uh, an addition sign or a multiplication sign. 
Now, uh, this problem is pretty straightforward because there's not too many operations going on here, but you could certainly have uh, math problems where you have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, all kinds of interesting things. But uh, this particular problem is not too bad. But let's go ahead and quickly review the correct order of operations. And again, you can remember it by this lovely little phrase here, PEMDAS. All right, so what does this uh, mean? Well, it's a checklist. You're going to go from left to right. And let's go ahead and talk about what these letters stand for right now. Okay, so P stands for parentheses. So if you see anything in your math problems where there's parentheses like we have right here, that's where you're going to, uh, that's where you're going to start. Now, but it's not only these type of parentheses. It could be these type of brackets like this or these squiggly brackets. And uh, the way this PEMDAS thing works is that if you have a math problem, we have parentheses inside of brackets, inside of like other squiggly brackets like this. Well, you always start from the innermost parentheses. And the P thing or the P word here in the acronym or our checklist means go inside the parentheses and if there's something to do, don't leave the parentheses until all the math inside of those parentheses is done. Now you can see here we have uh, some parentheses, but there's really nothing to do inside of the parentheses. They're simply just numbers. But uh, anyways, we are doing just a quick review of the order of operations. So uh, when you look at this, you're like, all right, well, I'm going to start with parentheses. Well, there's nothing to do. So we're going to move on to our next thing, which is E. All right. So E stands for exponents. When you have a power like this right here, three and one half squared, this little number up here is called an exponent. So really, you can think of this E as being power. So we're going to uh, start with parentheses. So if we don't have any parentheses, we're going to move on to check if we have any powers or any exponents. Of course, here we have two power situations, so we're going to have to address those. Okay, so now let's move on to the next thing on our list. And this confuses a lot of people. Matter of fact, uh, many, many people have, uh, you know, really struggled with the order of operations. Uh, and it kind of, you know, to me, as a math teacher, you see these crazy expressions. I'm pretty sure I look like this when I was totally lost with something. So don't feel bad if you made this error when it comes to the order of operations. And that is, we think, or, you know, a lot of people believe that the next thing to do on our checklist is M. Okay, now that would make sense because I'm saying to go from left to right. But uh, really, uh, matter of fact, before I even tell you what, uh, uh, how this works, let's just get um, these letters out of the way in terms of what they stand for. So M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. All right, so we would think that we're going to always do multiplication and then get all the mul multiplication done and then move on to division and kind of you know work this checklist from left to right. Well, that's not the way this works. So our next thing is M or D, okay? Now in this particular problem, we don't have a situation where we're dealing with both multiplication and division. Uh, so we'll technically have multiplication here because we're gonna have to take this and multiply it by itself. But uh, M and D uh, in the PEMDAS acronym means you're going to do multiplication or division if you have a situation where you have division and multiplication, or maybe you have multiplication then division, you're going to do whatever you see first from left to right. So if you have a division situation like 10 divided by two times five, well, this is what I see from left to right. So in, let's say this is a problem right here, you're going to do this first, not this. But if you had like, let's say six times three divided by two, well here you'll do the multiplication first because that's what you see first from left to right and addition and subtraction work the same way. It is a group. All right, so now that we understand the order of operations, it's going to be up to our basic math skills in terms of working with fractions and multiplying fractions and dividing fractions to get the right answer. So let's go ahead and take that first step. And that first step is to do what? Well, we have this little PEMDAS phrase in our head, and we are going to start with the P. So we're going to say, all right, is there any parentheses? Yes, but is there anything to do in those parentheses? The answer is no. So we're going to move on to E. Do we have any exponents? Do we have any powers? Yes, indeed, we do. So we're going to have to take the power or find the powers of these things right here. But in order to do that, we want to um, kind of change these fractions. We have mixed number fractions here. And we, will, uh, we want to rewrite these as improper fractions, okay? Uh, so what does that mean? Well, we're going to have to kind of uh, rewrite, again, 3 and 1 half 
differently and two and one third differently. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we have three and one half. Well, we can express three and one half or write that mixed number fraction three and one half as the improper fraction seven over two. Okay, so how do we do that? Remember, we're gonna take this two, multiply by three, so two times three is six, and then we're gonna add one. So two times three is six plus one is seven. That is our numerator, and we're gonna put that over two. So this is an improper fraction. Every improper fraction you can write as a mixed number fraction. So these are skills that you need to understand. So we would simply just take seven divided by two. Uh, so seven, oh, we'll do it over here real quick. So two divided by seven is what? Well, two goes into seven. Three, three times two is six. So we have one as a remainder. So that's gonna be one over this number right here, which is two. So that's three and one half. All right, so this is what we wanna do. We wanna change these mixed number fractions into improper fractions. And let's do the same thing with two and one third. So that's gonna be what? Uh, three times two is six plus one. And that'll be seven over three. All right, so now we have this problem. And we haven't even addressed uh, really anything yet other than changing these mixed number fractions to improper fractions. Now we need to take care of the power part of this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So 7 half squared divided by 7 thirds squared means what? Well, when you square something, it means take this value and multiply it by itself, right? So 7 halves squared means 7 halves times 7 halves. And we're going to divide that by 7 thirds squared, which means uh, 7 thirds times 7 thirds. All right, so at this point, a lot of you might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, let's go ahead and do the multiplication. Well, well, hold on here one second, because uh, when you have things kind of expressed in terms of their factors, oftentimes you don't want to just rush to multiply numbers together because uh, it could be beneficial to kind of leave the problem um, you know, uh, factored out. Okay, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So in other words, uh, when we multiply fractions, just a quick review, we're going to multiply the uh, respective numerators and denominators. So 7 times 7 here is 49 over 2 times 2 is 4. Now we could do this and do the same thing over here and just multiply, but I'm going to encourage you just to leave these answers kind of as they are. So now what we have is a product, right? So this is some value being divided by another value, and these values are fractions. So we have a fraction, uh, so this is going to be a fraction here, divided by another fraction. So what we have to do is understand how uh, to divide fractions. Now, one thing here that you could do, if you're really truly up to speed on your math skills, is to put some grouping symbols around your two uh, fraction situations, okay? So that's perfectly fine. You can add those in because uh, grouping symbols, you know, um, really, you know, uh, oftentimes they're not in every single math problem, but you can add them in if you're very careful. So remember, we're going to be doing in terms of PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, we're on the E step. So we want to evaluate all the powers. We really want to get the full answer here to both of these. So that full answer can be expressed in these respective groups. All right, so now we're going to move on to M and D, which is what? Multiplication or division. And we only have division here and no addition and subtraction. So now we need to think about dividing these two groups or these two fractions. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, just don't you love the way I kind of have to sneak that in? Well, I have to sneak it in because I need your help, okay? And I'm not shy to ask for help. Hopefully, you're not shy to ask for help uh, when it comes to learning math, all right? There's nothing worse uh, than, you know, basically struggling with something that you don't understand. I totally get it. Believe me, learning math is all relative, right? So you might be saying, well, that's easy for you, Mr. U2 Math Man. You know, well, maybe uh, you're, you know, a whiz at basic math and algebra, but maybe geometry is not your thing. Well, as you uh, continue to proceed, you know, for myself, you know, I have a degree in mathematics, um, abstract math, well, theoretical math, um, and then also have a master's degree. But, you know, things get, you know, challenging, all right, for everybody. It's just all relative. So what happens when you run into a stumbling block? Well, you have to really kind of buckle down and just get more committed, okay? So if you're struggling with math, believe me, you're capable of learning mathematics. And my channel is about offering encouragement and trying to make math interesting and clear and understandable for everybody. But to truly understand math, you need great comprehensive 
detailed math instruction. So I'm going to encourage you to check out my full main math courses. You can find a link to those in the description of this video. Um, for this, what we're talking about here, the math skills, uh, fractions, order of operations, I'm going to suggest two courses, uh, my math foundations course or my math skills rebuilder course. But uh, anyways, let's get back to this problem. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really does help me on YouTube and that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's get back to finishing up this problem. Now, I did add in some grouping symbols here, and that's perfectly fine because uh, this is the result. If we multiply uh, these uh, fractions out, this is the result of taking the powers of our improper fractions. But let's just talk about how to multiply uh, or how to divide fractions. So how do we divide fractions? As a matter of fact, let me just uh, come up with a simpler example here. So if I have one half divided by uh, three fifths. Well, when we multiply fractions, really what we're going to do is change uh, the division operation to multiplication. And the, uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to flip the fraction to the right. So our first fraction is going to stay the same. So that's one half. Then this becomes multiplication. Then we're going to flip this fraction. That's five thirds. Okay. So when we divide fractions, we need to find the reciprocal, which means uh, we're just going to flip that fraction to the right of the division sign. And then when you actually multiply fractions, you simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. All right, so that's a quick review on dividing fractions and multiplying fractions. So here, what we're going to do is go from division to multiplication by flipping uh, this uh, fraction or this result upside down. Okay, so we could just put these numerators down in the denominator and the denominator up in the numerator. So we're just flipping this upside down. But notice, I'm still leaving these things uh, unmultiplied. Okay, now why am I doing that? Because I see these lovely sevens. This over here uh, has sevens and this group over here has sevens. And I'm thinking, well, maybe there's an opportunity to, uh, you know, save myself some uh, you know, basically elbow grease in terms of doing the calculations here. And you're going to see here in just one second how easy this is to do. All right, so we have this fraction times this fraction times this fraction times this fraction. So this is just one big fraction problem. So effectively, to get the answer, we're just going to multiply all the numerators and all the denominators. But again, we don't want to do the actual multiplication just yet. So let's write it out this way. Okay, so here we have seven, uh, seven halves times seven halves times three over seven times three over seven. This is just one big multiplication problem. So all the numerators being multiplied by all the denominators. So you kind of write it this way. All right, so seven times seven times three times three over two times two times seven times seven. You see right here, we have like factors in the numerators and the denominators. And here you can cross cancel these out. So it's going to save us the you know kind of hassle of multiplying all these numbers out. So this is what you want to look for, especially when you're doing a problem without using a calculator. So we can multiply 1 7 to 1 7. Now this 7 here cannot take out two 7s. It's just 1 7 per 1 7 or one like factor to one like factor in the numerator and denominator. So this 7 can take out this 7. This 7 can cross cancel with this 7. So we're left with what? Two 3s in the numerator and um, uh, these two twos in the denominator. So three times three, of course, is nine, and two times two is four. So our final answer is nine over four. All right, so again, uh, you know, I like to explain things in a nice, easygoing manner. That's the whole idea of, you know, um, I think watching a video like this, I can, um, you know, obviously do this problem in about, I don't know, 30 seconds, one, two, three, but that's not the value, um, you know, to, of watching my videos. Okay. Now, of course, there's a lot of different teaching styles, but what I like to do is explain each component to a problem, because if you fully understand all the aspect of all the aspects of doing a problem like this, anytime you encounter something similar, you'll be able to understand all the aspects of, you know, different problems that are similar uh, to this. And that's the whole idea behind really understanding math, but you really need to practice. Okay. One problem is not enough. So if you truly want to, uh, you know, get better at math, you got to do a lot of practice problems. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.